All right, I'm gonna do a little tutorial here about how this Kraken drive works. I've done a couple of videos about it on different platforms now, and uh, people are kind of curious because, well, they're a bit of an enigma. Harnessing a glitch in a glitch-prone game is pretty brave, and getting thrust, meaningful thrust out of that is tough. Um, so, to start out with, I guess the, the first thing to, to get out of the way is that <laughs> The, the Kraken Drive is kind of cheating, but it's really, honestly, a lot more difficult to design a Kraken Drive than it is, I think, anyway, with regular engines. Um, it's not free, that's for sure. Flying them is much more difficult, and there's a risk of them getting stuck and exploding and costing you a craft, or at least the drive if you have a way to eject a critical Kraken drive from your craft. Uh, they also use quite a few parts, which is a limiting factor, probably the main limiting factor, really. So it costs a lot, computationally, to have them, and on top of the limit there, you, you also, your sim quality has to be good for the engine to work at all. As soon as the simulation quality dips, it stops working properly. So you really, for some of you, this might not work at all, depending on how good your computer is. Um, my first tip there really is just to start small. Uh, I, I do that with all of my KSP stuff anyway. All right, so to start off with, I'm gonna explain the theory of how this works. Um, docking ports have a little magnetic sort of force that attracts the crafts to each other once they get within range um, pretty close with the docking ports to aid with docking. This is the force that we exploit in building the Kraken drive. <clears throat> um, so when you have two docking ports pretty close together, uh, it doesn't matter really that much where they are in the craft, although when you have a lot of components you do want them inside like a payload bay or something uh, for aerodynamic reason. But the, the attraction force, or the, the difference in the forces when they're attracted, happens between the port with the highest acquire force toward the port with the lowest one. Um, so you need to enable advanced tweakables to be able to, to change this. But with this setup right here, with no power to the wheels or anything, um, this should just roll forward with the attractive force of those two ports. All right, so as you can see, the cart's just starting to roll forward. But as you can also see, it's not a ton of force. Now I'm getting a decent amount of speed here, but 30, 40, that's not gonna get us into orbit. Now these individual docking ports generate a kind of a weak amount of thrust. Um, the number of ports that you can put on your craft at, that your computer can handle is going to be the main limiting factor for how much power you can put into your Kraken drive. And it's the main reason that all of my Kraken drives are all in um, winged SSTOs. Uh, they're, they're an efficient way to use thrust so I prefer that method, and that's what I'm going to build here. Although you can do it vertically and build, you know, a, a cone, a rocket style, just straight ascent. But yeah, let's start out by building the drive. So first off, I'm going to actually base this on a payload fairing because according to the game, anything that's not inside either a fairing or a payload bay, basically anything in this page, um, counts against you for drag unless it's part of a stack so having a whole bunch of parts even if they're buried inside a fuel tank still counts against you for aerodynamics so I'm gonna build the whole assembly inside a payload fairing here to get around that um, so the first thing we need is our piston and we're going to use for this one we're I'm just gonna make a really little plane um, but I've been having a hard time getting enough thrust out of the little cylinders, so I guess we'll still just use the big one. And this is a little bit counterintuitive, having to rotate this to turn it around the other way, but I've found it's pretty important to have 
the piston attached to the center node, the actual uh, snap-on node, for the base part that you're using to hold the target docking port. Um, I don't know why that matters, but experimentally it makes a significant difference. Um, so after placing the, sec the, the target port here, and I hit move, have it snap on, and absolute, which is absolute relative to the part, that'll make sure that it's centered on the payload fairing here. And this we're going to set to zero. So this is our main target port, the one that's going to actually uh, absorb the forces here. And we'll add a small service bay to contain the front of this, because I'm going to be moving this piston up, and the front of it still needs to be contained, otherwise it's going to generate quite a bit of its own drag. And then we're going to put a stack of these on the back side. So there's, rotate this, and again with the absolute, and I'm going to push this up right about there. I may move, actually, I'm gonna just position this right off the bat. So this needs to be still inside. Okay, that's cool. That'll work then. And that's a good distance right there. That's about, I might actually move this closer just so that I can adjust it. The first thing I'm gonna do is place these and I'll show you when, uh, when we get to the part of adjusting them getting the right amount of thrust out of this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna turn that up to 200 as well. Okay, so now we extend this all the way. And we go to our action groups. Main throttle, target extension, and invert so that throttling it up makes the piston come down, which is forward in our case. And then with this all the way extended, I'm going to build my fairing around it. Just like that. Actually, let's give you a little bit of a tail. Then I can just use that as the tail. Yeah, that'll work. All right, now we need our regular aircraft stuff. So I'm going to stick an octo. We need a battery. And I'm also going to stick one RTG in here just to make sure that we always have power. So, and those are all the loose changes got to be inside a payload as well for aerodynamics. Then let's stick a Mark I on here and build our little airplane around it. Because ideally, your landing gear should be relatively close to your center of mass, your rear gear, and then your front gear should be basically all the way up at the nose. But we'll make it, we'll make it work. I may just need to move my, uh, my wings up. Let's set the landing gear level here. Cool. And this should get us into orbit. So let's see. We will find out. 
Alright, let's see if this works. It should work. Of course it'll work. Now, as I throttle up, that's going to move forward and then it engages. Boom. And a good amount of speed. Pick our gear up. It only the engine only starts working once you're throttled up all the way. And then you can scale it back a bit. But by right clicking on the uh, the forward, the target port, you can actually change the force. So if I turn this up, now the difference in force is gonna be less. And you can see, even with it throttled all the way up, it just produces that tiny little bit. Well, thank you for watching. I hope it was informative. If you feel like giving it a shot on your own, uh, let me know in the comments any cool things that you create out of this. Um, starting to get better at producing these and trying to put stuff out more regularly. We'll see how it goes. Uh, shout out to the best little rat in the world, Muffin, just absolutely going to town on this wheel. I know you can hear her uh, throughout most of my video. I don't have a camera at the moment, so you'll just have to take my word for it that she's the cutest.